Okay, it has been a while since we did one of these live. But first thing I hear when I wake up this morning is that there was an Arlecchino trailer drop. And it's 1 p.m. right now, which means that this came out probably while I was playing Helldivers last night, to be honest. I'm surprised I didn't hear about it till this morning. So, I don't remember the last time we reacted to a teaser for Genshin Impact, but might as well do it live because I did plan on streaming today and I didn't want to put my cancel my stream just to record a two and a half minute reaction to a teaser. But, we'll do a quick reaction here and if you want to know when I'm going to be going live, the best way to do that would be to join my Discord links to which will be on the description of this when it goes on YouTube, as well as the about page here on Twitch TV forward slash sheet streams. But that's enough about that. So let's just get into this first. We'll start with the video description and after which we'll do a small little bit of analysis. It'll probably only be like five to ten minutes. And then after which I will be switching games. Those of you on YouTube will probably see that stream maybe a day or two after this. There's a big backlog of stuff that's set to reveal, and I always try to push these reactions out earlier so they'll get more timely data. So, for those of you who do watch my VODs and my videos on YouTube, you will see this, uh, reaction portion much earlier than a lot of other content that was recorded ahead of it. So this teaser reaction will probably be out tomorrow on the uh, 19th. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it, this it's the 19th. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's just get into this. Oh, music already. Let's that there and let's not forget to read the description number 44 trending on gaming under all careful management the house of the hearth gives its children the most comfortable environment it possibly can no matter be they filthy and unworthy or loyal and noble all have a place to sleep in peace by the warmth of the hearth's fire all right well, that was short and sweet. Let's watch the, the trailer proper, I guess. It doesn't even list the, the VA in the description this time, although I guess that's worth noting. Look at all those hashtags. Eh, nothing else. Fight about 6,000 comments. Alright, let's jump into this. Hopefully nothing important shows up behind my face. Okay. I'm sorry, Father. I was reckless. I think that's the kid from... When I saw those emaciated patients... No, I don't know who this poor is. poor children... The futile hope in their eyes. Drop you I've ten. I've told you before. Recklessness always leads to failure. But it was not Oh, this is the musical anything. theme that plays during the, the, rest. the final feast trailer. Some nice shared motifs there. Ah, I love that. Those fools. They will never know the wonders of wealth. Why are you just huh? standing there staring at your money? Is that just a rich people thing that I don't understand? <gasps> How tall is Arlecchino? Oh, really? We're doing the step on me nonsense? Those heels are fucking blades. We saw them in the Final Feast trailer. Oh, he's dead. Boy, the fucking fan base is gonna go nuts with that. Your face. Fremene, we can take in a few more homeless children next year. I have acquired some new funds. <laughs> okay. Also nice to see you, Fremene. Mission accomplished. You can sleep now. Thank you. Once I'm better, I'll start my next mission. You're gonna die, aren't you? You're not gonna get better, are you? 
nope, they died right there. There's going to be a lot of graves on this hill, aren't there? There's a bunch of rings. Scandalous Reap. Oh, hang on, I want to read that. Those who the subtitles actually translated that. His scandalous reaping of profits under the guise of philanthropy be exposed. His eminence is imminent. His immense wealth has vanished without a trace. I love it when the Those subtitles add stuff. Their virtues often do the most evil. We are not like them. Oh, I think peace. I think that's the cemetery right outside Poisson. My child. Shnezhneva. There's another one of the Shneznova family. Uh, for those who don't know, a lot of the members of the House of Hearth have the adopted name Shneznova. You can meet several of them throughout the entire story. There's Katarina who shows up in the chasm. There's actually a bunch of them that show up in the chasm if you have explored that entire quest line. And uh, this is probably going to be the umpteenth time I've brought this up, but there is the quest line with the fortune slips and the Shumatsuban in Inazuma, where you can go into that, where you get to deal with a Shneznovich there. And honestly, I'm going to go back, because once the 4.6 patch comes out, that's one of the first things I'm probably going to do, is I want to go back and check on those characters from the super secret fortune slip, and even the people in the chasm, and there was also Alonzo or Alfonso from the, the Rana questline, the R&R questline, there was a Shneznova involved in all of that. I'm really curious to see if uh, any of those quest lines have been updated in 4.6, or if we'll get another one. Because the Shnezdeva family and the House of the Hearth is a quest line that has deeply intrigued me the entire play way we've been playing through the game. Because I've been an adamant, very vocal complainer about how much Aether seems to have a hate boner for the Fatui. I wonder if our interactions with Arlecchino and also, I guess, Child after the Fontaine Archon quest and F Linny and Lynette are finally going to be enough for us to get over that nonsense. The game story is over half over. What has the Fatui really done to Aether? Let's see. There, we kicked Venti. And we... I guess there's the the fiasco in uh, Liyue. That's two events. Oh, okay, I guess the Civil War was instigated by them in Izuma. That's three events. But that's uh, enough to be mad at an organization, sure. But, like, most people from Shneznaya are not just a gross representation. That's like you hate German people because World War II happened. It's a little bit kind of racist. Anyway, let's get ready to... Oh my god, they're doing freaking yard work out there again. Hooray. Alright, it's time to start doing some analysis here. Hopefully it's not going to be too loud behind me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, we'll just try to talk over it. So, as I was saying here at the beginning, I don't think this is the character we saw in the end of the previous Arlecchino trailer. I... They have a different eye color, so they're definitely not the same. It's definitely not Fremenet, who we see later in this trailer. And it looks like the newspaper of the philanthropy is also right, of the philanthropist is right here. And we see another person bandaged up. The, somebody pointed this out to me, that it was probably Arlecchino that bandaged up the character, what was her name, Clavette, in the previous trailer, and there was a special bow that was tied there. Because there's a someone pointed out that Columbina has the same bandages tied in the same way in the uh, Winter Nights Lotso trailer. So whoever bandaged them up here is probably not Arlecchino. And my guess would be they tried to bandage themselves up. And they're like slowly dying. The futile hope in their eyes. I've told you before. And then we cut... Well, we, we cross-faded from the newspaper on the table to this guy in person, sitting on that same chair. Oh, actually, I didn't, I missed this on the first time. So we have a different head title. Emerging Magnate Tar Tartuffe, Philanthropist and Savior of the Poor. But in all honesty, he's just hoarding wealth. Just a dirt bag, okay. 
I have no sympathy for him at all. But god, the fucking stepping on them with the heel. People are going to go fucking nuts over that. Somebody also pointed this out to me recently about the previous trailer that we watched with the with the song Burning in the Embers. Fremine apparently according to a lot of his voice lines and information and backstory, it knew the previous leader of the House of the Hearth, so it actually is calling into question his age, as well as Lenny and Lynette's, for that matter. It's definitely implied from the previous uh, teaser that we watched on other keynote that that probably only happened, like, maybe four or five years ago. The, the events of that trailer. So people are trying to ask, like, how old does that make from an eight? But I think they're probably in their late teens, early 20s. That being said, I know people that just look very young. I wouldn't be surprised if Fremine, Lenny, Lynette, and all of them are like in their late 20s. I wouldn't be surprised that they're all like 28, 29. Age in Genshin is one of those things that's always been really vague and superfluous. Especially when you consider that, like, what is it, three, four in-game years have passed chronologically. Because Lantern Rite is on the same day every year. And we've gone to three Lantern Rites. So, people that are concerned about Fremine being, like, an ancient person and that Arlequino is, like, 200-something years old. Nah, it's not that recent. Although, I did bring it up before. It is kind of crazy that Arlequino became a Harbinger and Harbin in their fourth ranked, fourth strongest. But it makes me wonder, we never learned what the previous knave was ranked or if the ranks can change or any of that. Oh my god, I hate when they're fucking cutting weeds out there. Oh, uh, boy. That's going to be really annoying. So let's just try to talk as much as we can over it. And then they die here. This is honestly really cut and dry. I don't really see why. I probably wouldn't have even reacted it if people didn't ask me to. But yeah, outside of the newspapers, I think I commented on most of the stuff that was in this on the first run through. But yeah, as mentioned, this is definitely the cemetery outside Poisson. You can tell by the where the positioning of the mountain and the flowers are. Which means that the giant lake is basically the angle that we're taking this shot from. Which means if this big grave... Maybe after 4.6 some text will be updated on this grave. So maybe note to self, go and check this particular tombstone in the 4.6 update. That's going to be on my list of things to do. And there's nothing after the credits. So, that's not really much to talk about here. Is that a tear dripping at the bottom of her chin? It is. Oh, no, it's rain. It's, what a horrible day for rain. Uh, anywho. Yeah, when you pause it, you can barely see that it's raining. Okay. Now, we'll pour one out for Melus and Silver while we're here. And I guess it might now be pretty much worth mentioning that in the trailer for 4.6, Arlequino says that she's going to make some sort of deal with Nouvellet that if he accepts, she will no longer do operations in Fontaine. So I wonder just how many operations she's been doing in Fontaine and how significant of an offer that means to her personally as well as to the Fatui as a whole. Because it's starting to look like, just like we learned in Lynette's backstory... A lot of these assassinations she does might be someone personal or people who have objectively harmed children or the house at the hearth. She's really a bleeding heart. Or at least that's what she appears to be. I'm still a little bit worried about her because of the voice lines we have from Tartaglia and the Wanderer. But as of yet, we've seen no evidence of this third side. And I... This third side, I guess we'll get to see in her character story when it comes out in 4.6. Long story short, this teaser doesn't really do much for me, except stir the minds and theories of stuff that I'm looking forward to in 4.6. I'm not even sure if there's something I missed here. The, in fact, the biggest thing I mentioned was that here at the beginning, they used the same motif for her theme that they used for her during the Final Feast trailer. But that's about it. So I guess we'll move on. Thank you for everyone who sat through with me just ramble for 13, 15 minutes. 
I'm probably going to edit this down. So, if you want to see more of these reactions live, then let me know so in my Discord and I'll do more of these reactions live. Or ping me. We have a feed in the, the Discord chat where people can recommend stuff for me to react to. I love doing analysis and deep dives into stuff. In fact, uh, if you haven't yet, I'll do one plug, more plug here. Go watch uh, Marco Meatball's video on the song Burning in Embers, because he does a lot of analysis of the music in a lot of the videos he reacts to. And that was a video I was waiting a long time just to see his opinion on it. I got a lot of uh, fun comments about some stuff that I caught in that, that a lot of people missed, but from... But Marco Meatball can look more into the musical motifs and the meaning behind the music. So look, look at, go check him out. And I don't think he'll have much to say about this trailer. I don't even expect him to react to it. That being said, he's a big fan of the Harbingers. Maybe he will react to this and maybe he'll point out a lot of the same things about that shared motif in the beginning that I caught on. Anywho, I'll see you in the comments of his video then, if that does happen. Anywho, that's all for now. If you want to see more of these in the future, join the Discord. And we're about to switch games here, so this is going to be the end of this video recording, and get ready for the next one.